Hey guys, uh, this may be a little clunky as we get started, but I'm going to move as quickly as I can and get you uh, through uh, this information. You'll see our vocabulary here. You got to go back and pick up the uh, uh, definition of notochord. Uh, you're going to need to make a note of these characteristics of vertebrates. So you can pause this and take a look at that. Also, the characteristics of the vertebral column. Look at the neural crest. Know what that is by definition and what, uh, what comes out of that in uh, embryonic development. You do not need to know uh, anything about a cladogram uh, or a uh, phylogeny, but uh, you do need to know these two things. What's their habitat and what are their general characteristics? Be able to list those. Uh, all of them have, all fish have jaws, uh, except the jawless fish, which is funny, but uh, that's one of the characteristics. Uh, you've got to be able to label these fins on a fish, know where they are, uh, what it, uh, what a fin does uh, to help them swim. Uh, also be able to match these four types of scales with what the scales are made of, what they might actually look like, why are scales important to fish? All that's in your reading. Um, gills, fish have gills. Uh, look at the operculum, what's that? What does it do? How does, uh, how does the uh, design of the gill allow for uh, the oxygen to be dissolved? So take a look at that. Look at the circulatory system. Notice most of all, how is this circulatory system different from the circulatory system of the amphibian, which we're going to look at later? And also, how is it different from yours? One will notice that you've got deoxygenated blood coming into the heart and deoxygenated blood coming out. It doesn't pick up oxygen until it passes through the gills. All right, so just take a note of that. So this is called a this is a one-way loop where we have an atrium and a ventricle. All right, uh, let's look at, so this is a, uh, a fish with a little cutout here for us to take a look at some major things that we have here. Uh, so fish are going to eat things whole. They don't really chew things. They might tear things if they are a major predator like uh, like a shark, but they're not chewing their food. Uh, whole food goes in. It ends up in the stomach here. We have a liver showing up. We have a gallbladder showing up, um, a pancreas. Uh, then we've got intestine here. Notice we have one body opening. One body opening for uh, solid waste to leave the body, one body opening where the bladder, so this is the kidney that leads to the bladder, and then this would be a gonad. So if this was a female fish, this would be ovaries, eggs would leave. If this was a male fish, this would be testes, and sperm would leave the body. Um, so we'll take a look uh, more at reproduction in, a, in another slide here. All right. Um, then the a little bit more here about the kidney, the nephron being that filtering unit. Uh, you also have nephrons in your kidneys. Um, look at the brain here. Uh, so you see that we've got some uh, different items labeled here. Um, all vertebrates have a cerebrum. Uh, and then we've got different sizes of things. You can see how that uh, all that plays out. We'll look at uh, the brain of other organisms later. The lateral line here, the lateral line system is something you want to read about. Take note of it. How does this help fish communicate with each other, move as a group? What does that look like for them? Um, so reproduction, uh, we're going to notice that most fish are going to reproduce uh, through external fertilization. There are some that reproduce uh, with internal fertilization. So there's some sharks that they reproduce intern uh, with internal fertilization because they hold uh, the developing shark babies inside their bodies. Guppies do that. Uh, and that process is called spawning, where uh, males and females re uh, release gametes, egg and sperm, close to each other in the water. Uh, and then take a look at how they move and how the swim bladder in uh has a part in that and how that movement, how their muscles are working against their vertebral column. Uh, all right, that's reviews our vocabulary. Let's take a look at section two here and get this big for us. Here we go. Uh, so uh, a tetrapod is our only new word here. And uh, so you can uh, define that. 
So we have three categories of fishes, uh, jawless, cartilaginous, and bony. So you need to be able to talk about those three. So as you're reading, take some notes. The hagfish and the lampreys are the jawless fishes. Uh, hagfish have an awesome slime that they release uh, that's, all, that's nearly as strong as spider silk. So that's pretty incredible. Uh, lampreys are parasites. So they're just going to attach themselves onto a fish and, uh, and eat. They have a round little mouth. And uh, so they don't have any true jaw. Uh, cartilaginous fish. These are going to be sharks and skates. Uh, and their they uh, their bones are soft, uh, made of cartilage. Uh, so that's why they're cartilaginous fish. Uh, so the bony fish. This is the fishes that you are most familiar with. And then there's only eight living species of these lobe-finned fish. Uh, so you can look at some pictures of them. They're uh, kind of, uh, they're pretty interesting. Uh, but ray-finned fish are are the, the biggest category of fishes uh, that, of what we typically know as a fish, what you would recognize as a fish. Um, all right, we don't need to look at... Uh, at the evolution content there. Uh, look at the habitat though, ecology of fish. Uh, how is their habitat changing? How does pollution affect them? Uh, how are they an important food source? And then there are our essential questions again. So you can take a look at that. Let's look at our third section here. Is this it? No, that's the second one again. That's the first one again. Here we go. Three. Third time's a charm. Nope. Let me go find it. Amphibians. There we go. Sorry about that. Let's see how we're doing on time. Good. So we've got new, thank you for bearing with me. This is a new process for all of us, isn't it? So here is our new vocabulary in this section. Uh, also reviewing metamorphosis because we know that amphibians uh, uh, many amphibians go through metamorphosis. Uh, we do not need to look at the evolution of tetrapods and moving from water to land. Uh, that is not something that we uh, are going to look at because we, I, I believe that amphibians were created for the place that they occupy in our ecosystems and the niches that they, um, that they uh, inhabit. All right, so if we look at their characteristics, uh, take a note of these. You can write these down, the general characteristics. I'm not going to read these to you. You can uh, pause this and, and get those in your notes. Um, and let's look at feeding and digestion. The new digestive uh, uh, organ that we're going to see here is the cloaca. So we don't have, again, like a fish, we have one body opening. So where so uh, solid waste. Uh, liquid waste and egg and sperm would all leave the body uh, if through one body opening. Uh, excretion, now we have ammonia or urea being formed as a waste product. That's uh, new. Let's look at this, uh, at the reproduct, I'm sorry, the respiratory and circulatory system. So larva of amphibians were, had gills and took in uh, diff diffused oxygen um, through their, uh, absorbed it through their gills and through their skin. Uh, but adults are going to breathe through lungs, uh, their moist skin and, uh, the cavities of their mouth. Notice here that we have a, what kind of heart do we have here? You have a four chambered heart. These guys have a three chambered heart. So the right atrium is going to send deoxygenated blood to the lungs. Then that's going to come back to the left atrium, fall down to the ventricle. Then the ventricle is going to pump that to the rest of the body. So what you see here is one ventricle, not two ventricles uh, that you have. So this is a double loop circulatory system. So please note how that is different from fishes and be able to uh, discuss that. Uh, here are some body features that we have. So nictitating membrane, tympanic membrane. These are with the, uh, related to their brain and senses. Um, so nictitating membrane will covers for their eyes uh, and tympanic membrane for sensing sound. These are ectotherms. So it means their body temperature is going to be uh, connected to their external uh, environment. Uh, reproduction. Uh, in most amphibians, this is external. We've got a shellless egg. So that egg is going to ne need to be laid in water and fertilized in water. And then we know that tadpoles, that's, it undergoes metamorphosis. Um, 
and uh, develops into uh, an uh, an air breathing organism. But you do need to know these orders here. So Anora and Caldata and Gymno uh, Fiona. Uh, so note what organisms are in each of those. That would be a matching kind of situation. So think about that. Uh, frogs and toads, how are they different from each other? So uh, you can uh, send uh, list that in your notes, keep those separate, salamanders and newts, and then the Sicilians. Uh, evolution, we don't need to take a look at. Ecology, read that, note what's going on there related to local factors and global factors. And then we're back to our essential questions. Now we're gonna be looking in the next, uh, in the next uh, couple of days, I'll be looking to send you a link where we can get together and uh, talk about some of these things. You can ask some questions. Uh, you'll be getting information on a virtual dissection of, uh, uh, of a frog and uh, you'll be walking through that. And then uh, some other good things coming. I miss you guys so much. Uh, God bless you. If there's anything I can pray with you about, please let me know. Um, I am just very excited to be learning along with you. Uh, please be kind and patient as we do this together. Um, and if you have questions or things aren't working for you, please let me know by remind or email so that I can try to fix that uh, and get you information in the best way possible. Okay. You guys have a blessed day. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye-bye.